Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be how the narcissist isolates you. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So, isolation. Isolation, many times, is something that the narcissist wants you to feel. And this begins from the inception of the relationship up into and including the ending of the relationship and for a period of time afterwards as well. And I'll dig into it. Isolation is something that if you want it, that's fine. Maybe you want to be left alone and you just like to have a quiet evening in your house reading a book or consuming a video. That's great. But when somebody isolates you on purpose, this is not good. This is a toxic behavior. It's a behavior that the narcissist knows how to use very well. And here we go. When you're in the relationship, remember, when you met the narcissist many times, not always, but many times, they portray themselves to be one person when in fact they are somebody completely different. They're playing on your heartstrings or your empathy. You're, they're playing on your kindness and your belief in humanity and or healthier, good, upstanding individuals. We now know that there are narcissists that walk the planet and there are toxic individuals that certainly do not have your best interest at heart. These people want to take from you and they want to diminish you and they want to extract your resources from you. One way they do this is by isolation. So here we go, you were with the narcissist. Let's say that you were having a dinner and the dinner you were having was supposed to be just the two of you. Let's say it's a romantic setting. And the narcissist, what are they doing? Maybe they're paying more attention to the waiter or the waitress than they are you. Doesn't feel good, does it? No, it's isolating you right in front of them and the waiter or waiter, waitress. It's triangulation. It's making you feel not good about yourself. And it's making you question yourself. Another thing, same dinner. Was the smartphone on one of, oh, was the narcissist on one of their smartphones? Most likely, why? Again, they're trying to diminish and or devalue you because they're saying that these other individuals who they may or may not be contacting at that dinner are more important than you. And this happens frequently and frequently it does happen. You get more and more diminished. You become less and less. You become an extension of the narcissist. And how the narcissist does this, they do it in plain sight. They do it to make you question yourself. And isolation is something that's not good. Another one, the smear campaign, let's say it's the ending of the relationship or the relationship has ended. Many times you will be, it will be difficult to find people that will support you, put it that way, because the narcissist has isolated you there. They have most likely made up rumors and or gossip and or told untruths about you and or the relationship, i.e. the smear campaign. And people who don't have the wisdom or people who believe in the mask of the narcissist they're gonna take the narcissist's side without even knowing what has happened. This is isolation again. That's why when the relationship has ended, and let's say you were discarded as an example, even maybe you weren't, but if you were, both actually, what happens is you find out who your real friends are. You find out if people were there to support you. You find out if people actually, who, were they, who, they, were, who they portrayed themselves to be. In other words, these people, many of them fly monkeys, which side do they take? Do they take the narcissist side? Do they take your side? Do they take neither side? Most times you'll find out they'll take the narcissist side or neither side. Why? Because these people, they believe in the mask and that is another way the narcissist isolates you. Another one, you're sitting on the couch, you're watching a movie or a documentary or something. You're sitting right next to the narcissist. Is the narcissist actually watching the movie or Netflix documentary with you? Maybe a little bit, but then what, what will they do inevitably? They will have to get up off the couch. They'll have to go to the store and buy something. They will have to get on Amazon and shop. They will have to pull out their smartphone and say, oh no, just keep it playing, it's no big thing. They're isolating you there too because they don't want to spend time with you. Now, I'm gonna pause here. Remember, when you were the flavor of the month, when you were in the love bomb slash euphoric stage, you could do no wrong. And you, at moments like these examples I'm sharing with you up to this point in this video, you're like, you know, what didn't used to be that way. It used to be like, this person was all over me. They couldn't stop sending me emojis and texting me and telling me how much they loved me and cared about me. And they would basically be all over me. That was the love bomb stage. That was when you were smothered with affection or adoration. And you were made to believe that this person would be continuing that effect on you for the rest of your life or for a much longer period of time, or perhaps it would decrease a little bit, but it wouldn't go away overnight. But that is what the narcissist did. 
They wanted you to fall for them. They wanted you to believe in them and believe in the mask. And then as soon as they knew that they had their dirty fangs sunken into you, perhaps you said the magic words, I love you, or perhaps you signed on the dotted line and created a business. Perhaps you moved next door to somebody who turned out about to be, about to be the narcissist, who turned into the narcissist. Any of these things, and there are so many more examples, this is where the narcissist wants you isolated. And that is when, again, like I'm mentioning, in the narcissistic abuse, abusive cycle goes from the love bomb slash euphoric stage, which is the beginning when everything's good, to the devaluation stage and or when you enter the narcissistic fog to the culmination of the relationship, which is when you either end it or you get discarded. Or the third part is you stay in the narcissistic fog and you just, you don't escape. And that becomes your existence. That's my take on it. Having said those things, another one, let's say you move in to the, to the neighborhood and your neighbor turns out to be a narcissist. Well, you don't know what narcissism is. You moved into the house next door and they befriend you and you have barbecues and you share, you know, um, you share um, like lawnmowers and snowblowers, that kind of thing. And then what happens? Well, then they, they know who you are inside and out. They learn about you. And then all of a sudden they start treating you differently. And then boom, you don't even want to leave the house now or you don't want to enter the house because your next door neighbor's a narcissist and perhaps they're peeking out of windows at you. Perhaps they're making noise all day, all hours of the days or evenings. Perhaps their yard is cluttered with nonsense. Perhaps they don't clean it up, who knows? But the narcissist is now your neighbor. And again, you will be isolated because what do they do? Most likely they have friends in the neighborhood and perhaps they're talking about you. These are examples. And remember, it's not one size fits all, but the narcissist wants to isolate you. They want you isolated so many times. So another one, when you are texting the narcissist, let's say it is a romantic relationship or brother, uh, sister, mom, dad, and uncle, whomever, what do they do? They, you will text them and they are supposed to get back to you whenever they want to. But if this person or these people who turn out to be the narcissist, if they wanna text you, you need to respond ASAP. You're supposed to be putting your life on hold for them. Remember that you're supposed to be building the narcissist up to the detriment of yourself. That's what they want. They want you isolated. They want you to become an extension of them. They don't want you living your best life. Another one, the way you get isolated, let's say your resources. Let's say in the past you had a lot of money or you had a couple cars or you had tangible assets, a couple houses, things like that. What happened? You probably were financially abused. Perhaps you were financially abused by the narcissist. And then perhaps you don't have the, the way to make the money back these days. Perhaps you've gotten older or, or who knows what's going on. Boom. Now all the nest egg that you had is gone or some of it's gone or a lot of it's gone. That's another way they isolate you. Another one, parental alienation. How does that work? I'll tell you how that works right now. Your kids, your grandkids, your stepkids, whoever it is, these are withheld from you. And maybe you're an aunt, an uncle, maybe you're a mom, a dad, who knows, brother, sister, sibling. But the kids, you will not be allowed to see them because why? Because this toxic individual, i.e. the narcissist, will not allow the kids, you to see the kids. That they're weaponizing the kids against you. They're isolating you again. The isolation continues in the narcissistic abusive cycle as long as you stay in it. And many times after you're even out of it, perhaps it's a sibling, they will still weaponize as many things as they possibly can against you. Another one, very, another example. The holidays just passed. Let's say there's a holiday coming up in a month. Example. Well, everyone gets invited to the event, but you, you're isolated. Remember those days when you were a kid? You were in grade school and perhaps you didn't get invited to someone's birthday party and you were kind of let down. Oh, I didn't, oh, well, what's going on? What happened? That's exactly what the narcissist does, but they're now 20, 30, 40, 80 years older. They again want to isolate people. Same thing. You're at a dinner party. You're at a cocktail party, barbecue, whatever you want to say. And the, you get there and the narcissist can't get there fast enough. They're walking way in front of you. Why? Because they're trying to isolate you. They're trying to make it seem like they are not with you. Although perhaps maybe you are and or were married. And a loving couple would be walking into the event holding hands or at least close, right? No, not the narcissist. They have to be in front of you. Act like they don't even know you. And then go cruise the room and, and take a look and see who the new sources of supply are, i.e. perhaps your replacement, and try and line those things up for a later date. That's, these are all the ways the narcissist can isolate you, and there are so many more. But I want to share these with you because isolation in the narcissistic relationship, it's not good. And that's how you are virtually when you exit the love bomb slash euphoric stage until the relationship ends. You feel all alone. Imagine this one. Here's a, here's a prime example, probably the best one I can share for this video. You didn't know about narcissism. You knew something was wrong. 
something was off with your partner or neighbor or family member, whomever, boss. And what happened? You Googled or typed in YouTube some keywords and boom, narcissism came up and you found channels like mine and many others. And again, thank you very much for being here. And you got your first light bulb moment. You're like, oh my gosh, this fits exactly what's going on in my relationship. I can't believe this. There's, this is a narcissistic relationship. These things are adding up. Oh my God, what? See, you were isolated. You didn't even know it. And you didn't even know that you were being manipulated and taken advantage of. Isolation, that's it. Because why? Because the narcissist isn't gonna come out and give you a two-page report about themselves and say, read this, this is what I'm gonna do to you throughout the relationship. And at the end, I'm gonna crumble you up like a sheet of paper and throw you away on the side of the freeway. They're not gonna tell you that. That's why they wear a mask. That's why they manipulate. That's why they take, take, take. And when they're done, what do they do? That's right, they take more until you go no contact, you block them, you remove all fly monkeys and people associated with the narcissist. You get the education, you couple it with your experience, you now have a superpower, you've healed and or you are well on the healing path and you begin to live your best life. That's the path. Now, of course, that will take time, but in time, in your time, you will do it. It just takes commitment, dedication, devotion, strength, courage, resilience, and fortitude. You will do it. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, no matter where you are. Remember, no matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. God bless you. Have a great, great afternoon, evening, or morning. Continue to focus on yourself. Continue to understand that the narcissist does not benefit you. They never have, they never will, and they can't. Continue to have boundaries. Continue to move forward with your life each and every day. God bless you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye, you guys.